Hey guys, my name is Brandon Barber and you're about to go inside with Mike Barber Ministries. Hey guys, my name is Brandon Barber, and you're about to go inside with Mike Barber Ministries. It's going to be incredible. You're about to hear some amazing worship. You're going to hear amazing words, some incredible testimonies from men and women inside the prison. There's just nothing like going inside prison. I mean, the Bible says when you've gone into prison, you have visited me. The thing I love about prison ministry is being a pastor. It taught me how to love people right where they are. It told me not to look at their past mistakes, but to love them right where they are to help them get to where they're going. And I think that's what Jesus is all about. And you're going to see just that. You're going to see the heart of God loving people. They're not tagged with a number, but God still knows them by their name. They got a future and they got a hope. And I promise you, you're going to see that right here on Inside with Mike Barber. The first time I seen Mike Barber was in 2004. I was 21 years old. I had just came to prison for the first time. And the women that came to the dorms and prayed with us, she sat with me and she talked to me and she prayed with me about my family and about my life. And she began to plant seeds in me about, um, about Jesus. Every time they come, they have such a passion for us and they made me feel like there was hope you know, just because I'm in prison doesn't mean nobody wants to have anything to do with me. It doesn't mean that God can't use me to reach other people. And I just know that since I have given my life and fully surrendered my life to the Lord, He has filled me with a peace that I can't even describe. Young people that are out there struggling, that think addiction is the only way to go, that think that they can never be forgiven for what they've done and they're not worthy and they're not loved, I just want to be able to tell them that there is hope. We have a Savior who has given His life for us and that there is hope and that they will use us for something. Come 
come on, sing this to you. I know breakthrough is coming by faith. I see a miracle. My God gave me a promise and it won't stop now. Come on, that's your anthem tonight. about my future at 40 years old than I've ever been in my entire life. I am more at peace and I'm happier in prison, which is the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard than I've ever been in my entire life. To think that I could be used for the kingdom of God is just mind blowing. Um, I've recognized that I am a servant and that my service does not depend on anything else except for waking up with breath in my lungs. He literally snatched me from the grave. God really stirred a message in my heart called get back up. You know, even though the world has tagged them with a number, God still knows them by their name. They got a future, they got a hope. No matter how much the world knocks them down or family or bad decisions or habits or addiction may knock them down, the good thing about Jesus is he can bring us right back up again. And so I pray that you're gonna be encouraged in your home. Even though you weren't in the setting of the prison with us, I believe God can go right through that lens right now, wherever you're watching from, invite a friend to come watch it with you right now Enjoy the time with us as we go inside the hobby unit. Usually I'm the one doing all the traveling, uh, but my wife traveled for two weeks. So I was playing Mr. Mom for two weeks. Come on. I want y'all to know, I made it. Like, I made it, baby. Yeah. I mean, like, hey, they got their veggies. Let's go. <laughs> laundry was done. We need a laundry fairy in my household. Come on, like. I'm sure mom's gonna attest to that, am I right? Like, it's amazing how laundry stop, packs up, and, and uh, it, was, it was hilarious. We are, we are my daughters, they, they're in all different sports, and so they love to put their hair in ponytails, and they're actually more nervous about that than anything else, their mom leaving them with me. And, uh, and my daughter, it was so funny, but it was so sweet at the same time. My daughter uh, came up to me, and they said, Dad, just do the best you can. And, <laughs> And I was just like, and literally, I tried to put the ponytail together and jacked it all up. And they were just like, Dad, it's okay. You did so great. You did amazing. I'm like, how can I ever get onto you? So I got the ponytail. I got the veggies. Let's go. Like, and then something big kind of happened. My oldest daughter, she's, she's 10, and she went into middle school, and she just started kind of dating a little. Not dating. No, she didn't. Hold on. Let me take that back. <laughs> That's not till at least 47 years old. But it's kind of like, you know, like she likes some boys and it's just like that flirtation. And, and it hit me, she's going into middle school and I was just like, I said, uh, I said, baby girl, here's what's gonna happen. I said, somebody's gonna slide you a note. 
and it's gonna say check yes, no, or maybe. Come on, somebody, am I right? And I said, what do you think dad wants you to check? No. And she went, no. Well, guess what happened two weeks ago? She said, dad, I got a note. And she came up to me, she goes, and I checked yes. You disobedient child. So we've been working through that. Even today, you know, my, our alarm system at our house has like the camera on the doorbell and, and there was three young boys from the neighborhood came ringing on the doorbell. And so, thank you, Jesus. I have a little talk back mic, I can talk to them. And I just let them know, because they don't know if I'm up in that house or if I'm gone. I just talked like I was behind that door, so, and, uh, but, <laughs> it's, it's just truth, come on. Y'all remember Scared Straight? That's called barber parenting, come on, that's what we show you. We do that, man. I wanna share with you just very quickly, a th this thought is, I know that we've all been beat up in life, I know that we've all made mistakes. Anybody ever made mistakes? Come on, anybody in the house? Anybody ever fallen? Now, not even a physical fall, even though that's happened. I can tell you stories about that preaching. I tripped, I was beginning baptized for the first time in front of a whole crowd. I tripped over the baptismal face first, boom. I had to get baptized twice. That's how bad of a sinner I was. Come on, anybody else with me? Don't lie in church. Come on, raise your hand. Like, 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 but we've all fallen, but how many know this? I, I want you to know this. It doesn't matter where you've come from. It doesn't matter where you've been. You messed up last night, last week, last month, last year. How many know God's got way more grace than we got problems? He wants you to just love you right where you are to help you get to where you're going. Now, I don't care what you might think, but I'm telling you, every person in this world, God said he knew you before you were even in your mother's womb. You got a calling and you got a purpose. Prison, you might be in prison, but prison don't have to be in you, right? You got a number tagged by the state, but God knows you by your name. This ain't your home. Come on, somebody, am I right? This is just a temporary residence. You got a purpose. You got a future. You got a hope. And how many would agree with this statement, statement just because you have a fall, doesn't mean you've lost your call. But I want you to know, just because you might be in prison, doesn't mean that God doesn't want to use you. Doesn't mean you're not somebody. You're everything that you need to be right now in this moment that God has created you to be. And I just have one thought that I want to talk to you about. Man, if you had fall, I want to talk about this topic is get back up. Come on, somebody shout, get back up. I say it with some attitude. Get back up. Get back up. How many know we fall, but we gotta, we gotta get back up? Get back up. There's a man in the Bible by the name of King David. How many of you believe he was a great leader? He did great things. He had a call of God on his life. At a young age, a prophet by the name of Samuel called him out of the middle of the field, went and anointed him, and then sent him back into the field. How many of y'all like to get a, get a raise? or get a promotion and then sent right back to your old job. He kind of messed up, huh? Or God trust God's timing. But here is a man, he's, he's become a great man, became a great father, a great leader, a great warrior. He just had everything that we want to be that God has called us to be. But all of a sudden we pick up in the story of David, there was one week where all hell broke loose in his life. It was just one moment where he fell. How many all can take is maybe just one thing, right? And it says in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 12, verse 2, how many, want to, how many want to keep being everything that God has called you to be? Come on, anybody. Like, he says it, he says it in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 2. This is right at the moment, by the way, right before his worst day in his life began, his worst week. This is the moment where he saw a lady bathing on the top of a roof. Anybody know the story? The original strip club. Come on, it's up there. 
And he was like, oh, that's funny, I don't care what you say. That's... <laughs> it's just real talk. Because what we're going to read is it was there every day. And then from that, then it went on to he committed murder. And then back, the Bible says he locked himself in a place and he hit depression. But it all started with one and became a domino effect of just one decision in one moment. And right here before it happened, it says in 2 Samuel chapter 11, verse 2, it says, then it happened one evening. Then it happened one evening. That David arose from his bed, and it says from his midday rest, and he walked on the roof of the king's house. In other words, if he arose from his midday rest, that means this was a daily rhythm for David. This is something he did every single day. So he knew she was going to be there. And he's king. He has his own castle. Every day he could have woke up and is walking outside, and instead of going right, he could have gone left. And he could have gone backwards instead of going straight and going right. He's king. He could have had her removed. He could have put up a wall to where he can't go. But how many know he kind of liked it? And all of a sudden, he allowed himself to get into a place where something was going to have him make a bad decision that began the worst decision of his entire life. Because I guarantee you, where you are right now, it, it, didn't start, it started with something small. Am I right? started with one moment. But it says in the very beginning, it says, then it happened. I know there's one thing, one moment. And because David didn't have the the strength to say no to the one thing that he knows he should not say yes to. All of a sudden, because he didn't handle it, it handled him. Are you with me? This is exactly how sin works, by the way. Sin is like getting hustled. You think you got a deal, but the deal actually got you. Come on. Are you, are you following me with me? And because he didn't handle it, it handled him. It became a track record of just falling down and, and falling down. And by the way, we all got an it in our life. We all got it. We drink it. We smoke it. We text it. We call it. We back it. Oh, okay, sorry, but we... Forgive me, bring it back. Y'all know it's true. <laughs> you old neighbor say, bring it back to Jesus. Bring it back. Bring it back to Jesus. <laughs> but here's the deal. <laughs> but how many would agree? Are you hearing me? If you don't identify and address it, it will identify and address you. You all know exactly what it is. And you might think, that ain't that big of a deal. Like, like, why should I get rid of this one thing? Like, 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 isn't God's grace big enough for that? Yes, and there's some things you know you need to get rid of. Or else you're going to keep going down the same cycle you've always been in. You're going to keep coming back to prison. You're going to keep getting in that addiction. You're going to keep messing up and hanging out with that wrong person. Like, you're going to keep saying yes to him. When you say, you need to say, bye, Felicia. Am I right? You, 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 you got that one thing. It's kind of like, what if, what if I like said, hey, guys, I got a big, huge cruise ship. Let's go party. Let's go. You get on the boat, I'm like, hey, guys, it's going to be an amazing time, but don't worry about it. I just want you to know, we just got one hole in the boat. How many of y'all going to want to get off that boat? Are you following me? You gotta, you gotta get rid of it. You gotta learn like you get rid of it. The good thing about God is that if you give it to him, how many know he will help get you back up and to be the woman that God has called you to be? And here's what it says in scripture. Here's how, how did David get back up? Here's how David got back up. In 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 20, it says this. So David arose, he got up. So I'm gonna say, get up! He got up from the ground. He did a few things. The Bible says that he washed his face, another his eyes. He anointed himself. 
he changed his clothes, and then he went into the house of the God and he worshiped. Then he went into his house, and when he, this is after he hit depression, he already committed murder, he had that one thing, and he let that one it thing control him, and his whole life went to hell, and he ended up being in a place that he said he would never, ever be in. But he said he went up to his house, and when he requested, he sat down for food before them. Come on. He said, I'm going to get back up, and I'm going to get me some water burger. Let's go. <laughs> but the first thing he did is he got up, and he washed his face, and he washed his eyes. It says in Acts 9, verse 18, immediately. How many know when you make a decision to get back up, how many know God can change things immediately, right? <laughs> says Immediately. Something like scales begin to fall from Saul's eyes, and he could see again, and he got up. He got up. All of a sudden, scales, like, he, he could see differently. He said, like, he washed my face, and I got to wash my eyes, and I got to be able to see different. Jesus would say this all the time to his disciples. You got eyes, but you cannot see. You got eyes, but you cannot see. And I think that's what the Lord would want to say to every single one of you. Every single one. You got eyes, but you cannot see. If you could only see you the way that God sees you. If you could look into the mirror for the first time, and instead of being disgusted and frustrated, you could look in that mirror and you could see you the way that Jesus sees you. And I think that's the first step. Like, man, I want, I, want, I want to get my life back again. I want to get my life back on track. But I'm going to wake up. What if tonight we're saying, you know what? Let me tell you, like, Jesus says if you give your life to him, he washes your sins away. And he thinks about it no more. So if God's not thinking about it, why are you still thinking about it? And it's time to get up and be who God has called you to be. And it might be just simply like, you got to change your eyesight. You got to stop seeing yourself as an inmate. But you got to start seeing yourself as free. You are a woman, a called by God. You are anointed. You are chosen. You are somebody, and your best days are ahead of you yet. Can I get an amen? It's time to get back up. It's time to get back up and be everything that God has called you to be. You got to change the way. You see you. And then what did David do? David, David anointed himself. Now, you know what being anointed by oil is if you grew up with a praying mama or a praying grandmama. I don't know about y'all, but there was many mornings I woke up that all of a sudden I woke up and there was just oil like dripping from my forehead, like all the way down. I'm like, what is this? And I wake up, my mom's like, shut up. Get it out of him. Jesus, get it out. Come on, anybody had that happen to you? Come on, like... I got oil, it was just like, ah! He's full of sin, God, get it out, get it out. But here's, <laughs> here's what happens though, I want you to hear this. That when a prophet would anoint somebody that is called, he would anoint them, and he would anoint them with oil, and as he anointed them, he would speak over the life they are called. They are children. They're, they're an instrument of God. He was praying this over David. He's saying, you are called to be the king. You are called to be the one. You will change your family legacy. You are somebody. Like he just spoke words of what He spoke life over him. He spoke power over him. He spoke freedom over him as he anointed him. And David, sometimes, sometimes this is what's got to happen. Samuel was nowhere around. But David woke up one morning. He got up. He realized, I got, I got to wash my face, and I got to see me differently. But then also, I realized that sometimes you got to, you got to look at yourself, and you realize that you got the power in your own words. And he anointed in himself, and the very words that Samuel spoke over him, he was looking in the mirror and speaking over himself. He said, I am called. I am called to be a king. I am a son of God. When's the last time you've been praying for everybody else? When's the last time you believed and you prayed for you? When's the last time you looked in the mirror and said, yeah, 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 devil, you ain't got me no more. 
I am called. I'm going to see myself differently. I am a woman of God. I am called. I am chosen. You can use me. When's the last time you just had just like just the power and the authority? Like, I ain't going to let this life shake me no more. And if you don't realize, I want you to understand, how many believe that there's power in your words? Come on, anybody in the house from over here? Come on. How many believe in the power of this word? Come on, anybody believe in the power of this word? How many believe that Jesus is the same yesterday, today, and forever? And what he spoke 2019 years ago is the same word that he spoke on the inside of you. How many believe that's for today? And there's something powerful when you realize that there's power in your words. You've got everything that you need on the inside of you. The Bible says that it's the power, the renewing of the mind that changes your life. I want you to get this. The words that are coming out of your mouth are so powerful that your mind has to stop to listen to what your mouth has to say because whatever comes out of your mouth controls your mind and whatever controls your mind controls your body. Oh, come on, I'm trying to preach to somebody tonight. You got to realize you got the power on the inside of you and you just got to wake up and you got to wash your face and say, I'm going to see myself differently today. I am a called. I am chosen. I am somebody. I am a person of influence. Come on, are you with me? Somebody shout, I am called. I am called. I am somebody. I am the daughter of the Most High. My life ain't over. Come on, are you with me? Like it's time to get back up. It's time to be everything that God has called you to be. When, when y'all come in and show the Lord's love to us, it shows us acceptance. It shows us that we, we can make it that just because we're in this place, we do still have a future and a hope. How they were on fire for God and how they were, he was passionate about what he, he does. And as long as you trust in God and have faith in God, then uh, that's all that matters, you know? Hey guys, thank you so much for watching today's program. I pray that you were blessed by it. You know, we would love for you to join the team. You can become a teammate with the Mike Barber Ministries. You can do it in three ways. Number one is pray for us. Pray that God continues to open up the doors for us to go reach more men and women behind the prison bars. Number two is this. We cannot do this without your generosity. Will you pray and consider about making a financial donation to our ministry to help us go and to reach more people? Number three is this, and my favorite, is come on a missions trip with us to prison. Come volunteer with the Mike Barber Ministries. You know, it's fun watching by television and online, but there's nothing like coming in person on a Mike Barber weekend. And for any other information, we would love to stay connected with you. Go to our website, mikebarber.org. Thank you again for watching us today. We love you, fam, and we'll see you next week.